As shown, a uniform rod is rigidly attached to the disc. A block is attached to the end of the rod. We have some properties of the rod and the block as follows. Where the rod has a given mass and a certain length, the block has a given mass and the disc has a certain radius. But the system is held in equilibrium with the rod at an angle theta naught to the vertical, as shown by a horizontal string of negligible mass with one end attached to the disc and the other to the wall. Determine the tension in the string in terms of m, theta naught, and g. Let's talk about all of the forces that could be in play for setting up a force equation here. One is pretty obvious. We have the string pulling us to the right with the force of, let's call it, T for tension. Other things we have include a independent block with its own mass of 2m. So I could talk about the force of gravity straight down as being 2mg. We mustn't forget also that we have this rod which is not massless. Now assuming the center of mass of the rod to be halfway up the rod and assuming that all the mass could just as well be concentrated there, I say that right here we have a gravitational force equivalent to mg. Now I could talk about the disk, but I wasn't actually told that the disk has any mass. So it must not be important for me to talk about the gravitational force of the disk, assumed to be right there at the center, although it is presumably there. The reason I don't need to talk about that is because that force of gravity acts at a radius of zero, and this is a torque problem. We are going to set up a torque equation that addresses each of these forces and how each of these forces would turn the disk if left to themselves. I'll remind you that the definition of torque is F R sine theta. For instance, the tension is a force pulling the disk to the right. There's the force vector. The radius vector is this way. The theta refers to the angle between the radius vector and the force vector. But let's set up a force equation. I'm sorry, rather a torque equation. The sum of all the torques on the disk. We have a tension which if left to itself would cause our disk to rotate in the clockwise direction which by convention is negative. So, if I talk about the torque added by the tension in the string, I would deal with the force, F, which is equal to T. The radius, which is equal to the known radius of the disk because the string is attached at the end, capital R. I don't have to put sine of theta. It's just 1 because the angle between the force and the radius is 90, and sine of 90 is 1. I'm going to put a negative sign in front of this to signify that left to itself, this force would cause the, the disk to rotate clockwise. Now let's deal with this, mg. Left to itself, this, as well as this, would cause the disk to rotate in the counterclockwise or the positive direction. So the next thing we write down is plus mg for that force, also times r. But this time, the theta is not 90 degrees. In fact, you could tell by the opposite interior angles here that if this one was equal to theta naught, then that one would be equal to theta naught as well. So we may say that the angle between force and radial vector is theta naught. So we put mgr sine theta naught. The next thing we encounter is the, is the block at the end of the rod also a positive torque vector because it would pull us in the counterclockwise direction, but this time the force is equal to 2mg. The radius is equal to 2r because that's how long I was told the rod is. And we could easily transpose the theta naught over there as well. So we have to put down sine theta naught. Now, of course, 
all of these torques must sum to zero because they told me that the system is being held in equilibrium. Zero equals negative TR plus MGR sine theta naught plus two MG, another two R, I guess at this point I could put four MGR sine theta naught. Now a reminder that I'm looking for T, but I've been given most of the things. Some of the things that I can cross out, whoops, I forgot that that was a capital R, significant because all of these terms have R in them. And since it's equal to zero, I may cancel out all the R's. Never even needed to know it, and I'm not allowed to report the answer in terms of R anyway. I can only use M, theta, and G. But that's it for the things that I can cross out. Not all of them have an M, not all of them have a G, and not all of them have a sine theta. But, writing down what we do have, we have negative T, zero equals negative T, plus MG sine theta, plus four MG sine theta. Actually, those are like terms, so those might as well be five MG sine theta. So zero is equal to negative t plus five mg sine theta, which is algebraically equivalent to t being equal to five mg sine theta naught. And that actually concludes this one part problem.